So let's stick with this idea, the simplification, that there's a gene for eye color, and it only comes with two variants. It has, it has the dominant variant, which, is, which codes for brown eye color, and it has the recessive variant, which codes for blue eye color. So if you have any of, if either one of your alleles is this capital B, you're gonna have brown eyes. The only way to have blue eyes is to have a lowercase, is, is to be homozygous for the recessive allele. Now let's say that in a population, it's a large population, one that meets all of the, uh, the, the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium uh, assumptions. Let's say that you were to observe that 9% of this population has blue eyes. So now we're talking about the phenotype. You can actually observe that they have blue eyes. So based on this, can we figure out, can we figure out P, which is the frequency of the dominant allele? Can we figure this out? And can we figure out Q, which is the frequency of the recessive allele? Can we figure that out as well? And I encourage you to pause this video and figure, and based on what we saw of the Hardy-Weinberg equation, can we figure these things out given this information? Well, let's revisit the Hardy-Weinberg equation. We've worked it out in the previous video, but I'll rewrite it right now. It says the allele frequency for the dominant, the, the dominant allele frequency squared plus two times the dominant allele frequency times the recessive allele frequency plus the recessive allele frequency squared is equal to one. And we saw that this just comes from the idea that P plus Q is going to be equal to one. There's a 100% chance if you were to randomly pick a gene that it's one of these two, one of these two variants. Now when we say 9% has blue eyes, what does that mean? Well, in order, the only way to have blue eyes is if your genotype is homozygous recessive. Because if you have a capital B in here, then you're gonna have brown eyes. So we can say that 9% also has this genotype. Or you could say that the frequency in the population of this genotype is 9%. But we've already seen that's exactly, that's exactly what this term right over here is. That's this Q squared term. This is the probability, one way to think about it, of getting of this is the Q of course is the frequency of the recessive allele. Now this is the you could view this as the probability of getting two of the re recessive alleles is going to be if you're in your population it's going to be nine percent. So we could say Q squared is equal to nine percent. Or another way to think about it, this term right over here is nine percent or zero point zero nine, zero point zero nine. That's what this. 9% has this genotype, that's what this tells us right over here. So then we can solve for Q. If Q squared, I'll write it as a decimal, 0.09, that means that Q is going to be the square root of 0.09, which is equal to 0.3. So just like that, we were able to figure out the allele frequency of the recessive allele. 30%, and I could write that as a percentage, 0.3 or 30%, if you were looking at the genes in the population, 30% express our code, code for the recessive allele, or the, or the recessive variant. And so based on that, we can figure out what percentage code for the dominant variant. The rest of the, the, rest of the genes must code for the dominant one, because we're assuming there's only two of them. P plus Q equal 100%, or P plus, P plus Q is equal to one. So this must be 70%. So just based on that, we can, all, we, can, we can kind of dig a little bit deeper here. So what is P squared? P squared is going to be 70% squared, or 0.7 squared. So this right over here is 0.7 squared, which is 0.49. So one way to think about it is, based on this, and once again, a lot of simple equation, but these really neat ideas are starting to pop out of it. Based on just this information, we're now able to say that 49% of the population is going, to be, is going to have a genotype of capital B, capital B. They're gonna be homozygous dominant. And then we can figure out this right over here. Two times P times Q, that's going to be two times 0.7 times 0.7 times 0.3 times 0.3, so let's see, that's going to be two times, two times 0.21, so this is going to be, this right over here is going to be 0.42. Or another way to think about it is, 42% of this population is going to have the genotype uppercase B and lowercase b. And you see they all add up. 49% plus 42% is 91%, plus 9% all adds up to one, all adds up to 100%. 
So you get a little bit of information here, and based on what we know about allele frequencies, making a few assumptions, we're able to get a lot more knowledge about this population. And this, could, this is actually very useful in real life. When people think about, say, a recessive allele that might cause some type of a disease, based on, based on the incidence of that disease, people can start to think about, well, what percentage of the population is a carrier, say, they're, they're heterozygotes, for that disease. So this is actually very useful in real life.